الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد إن الله لا يجرب أحدكم بالبلاء كما يجرب أحدكم ذهبه بالنار الله جل جلاله ومن واله تس يوث difficulties hardships calamities like how you test gold by putting it in the fire and separating the gold purifying the gold purifying the metal and processing it فَمِنْهُ مَا يَخْرُجُ كَالذَّهَبِ الْإِبْرِيزِ after that process from the metal pure gold comes out فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي حَمَاهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ شُبَهَاتِ that is the one who Allah has protected from doubt, from complaining, from turning to the creation, and his heart was connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He turned to Allah, he increased his a'mal, he prepared for akhirat, he prepared, and he was ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِنْهُ مَا يَخْرُجُ دُونَ ذَلِكَ And some processes, the result is some other things come out. Some your gold, some less, some less, some less. فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَشُكُّ بَعْدَ الشَّكِّ And that's the one that had doubt in the last stage. So we had pure gold, we had some mixed contaminated gold, and the last one was وَمِنْهُ مَا يَخْرُجُ كَالذَّهَبِ الْأَسْوَرِ That comes out black gold, completely dirt, it's no gold at all. فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي أُفْتُتِنَا And that's the one that has been tested and failed the test. So in difficulties and hardships, we need to see what is the Amr of Allah. Be patient. Our hope and reward is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another riwayat, إِنْ طَلِكُوا إِلَىٰ عَبْدِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the malaika, go to my servant. فَصُبُّوا عَلَيْهِ الْبَلَاءِ صَبَّا and pour on him calamities. فَيَحْمِدُ اللَّهِ when this difficulty comes to him, he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَيَرْجِعُونَ the farishtas go back to Allah. فَيَقُولُونَ يَا رَبَّنَا O Allah, سَبَبْنَا عَلَيْهِ الْبَلَاءِ صَبَّا we've poured calamities, we showered him with difficulties, how you commanded us, and he prays you, irji'u fa'inni uhibbu an asma'a sawtahu, since he is the one that is praising Allah, remembering Allah, getting close to Allah, return to him. So a believer needs to see at every, every given time, what is the command of Allah? And that should take me closer to Allah. مَنْ أُصِيبَ بِمُصِيبَةٍ بِمَالِهِ أَوْ فِي نَفْسِهِ A person is tested with regards to his wealth, or his body, his health, فَكَتَّمَهَا And he hides it. The difficulties in the hardship, he does not have to complain and tell everybody the issues. He speaks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَكَتَّمَهَا وَلَمْ يُشِئْهَا إِلَى النَّاسِ And he does not expose it to the people. What's the benefit? Rather speak to Allah than speak to the creation. كَانَ حَقًّا عَلَى اللَّهِ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ لَهُ And it is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him. Yes, if there is a need and the person is completely incapacitated, then to request for عَلِيَا to do certain a'mal, ma'amulat, that is possible. But we should not make it a routine. Nowadays our everyday talk is about Corona. This person got it, this person didn't get it. This person is in quarantine, this person is not quarantine. Oh, this person died. Is that the only topic on our tongues? If you want to kill and wipe out battle, then don't speak about it. And if we look into it, everything about it is vague. This is not the time to get into it and not going to discuss anything about it, but just pass in synopsis. Firstly, let us think about the Accuracy of the test, was it equipment designed for that, the different molecular structures which they're searching for? Somebody's asymptomatic means he's got the virus, but there's no symptoms in him. And some reports say it's transmitted, now they say no, it's not transmitted. 
So a person can be sick, but there's no symptoms of sickness at all. Somebody goes to the doctor, I'm very sick, what's wrong with you? I don't know. So that's a question mark. Then deaths, how many deaths have been labeled where a person had other serious symptoms and different diagnosis, but on the cause of death, this has been written. Then, for example, in a country where 300,000 people have been infected, realistically, they say 300,000 based on the tests they've done. But then on average, if you look in a household as well, one or two people will maybe go for the test. Many people don't even go for the test. So actual statistics are probably 80 or 90 percent more. It should be two or three million that are infected, got it and don't even know about it. If we go by as asymptomatic, maybe five or ten million people in that country. So everything is vague. Then from the 300,000, they say 140,000 people have recovered. So who's keeping the data of who recovered? And the balance, if there was 5,000 deaths, 155,000, what has happened to them? The point is, everything here is vague. Yet we are discussing that. But for a believer in these times and these difficulties, it's an opportunity now to make Toba compared to a person having a sudden death. So look at it as a bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, he can prepare, catch up, Kazai Umri, uh, if a person has debts, if a person hasn't sought out a well, if they fulfill the hukuk of the creation, ask people for maaf, now a person got an opportunity to sort out our hisab kitab. Thirdly, if Allah takes a person, then he dies a shaheed. And fourthly, in no normal situations, if there's a war, the families are wiped out, houses are wiped out, person's life changes, there's no food, there's no clothing, there's no any resources. Your person is still having all his resources, his family. So comparatively to other situations, this person is not so bad off. So we should make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make shukr for Iman. How many kuffar have passed away, have got the virus, but there's no hope for them because they don't, number one, they don't die on Iman, they're going to Jannah forever. A believer has hope for Jannah. Secondly, he has hope he dies shahadat. Thirdly, he has amal things to do during this time. Ta'adiyah, Quran, etc. So, this is a great favor of Allah that Allah has given us Iman comparatively to everybody else. So we should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of this ni'mat of Iman. The virtues of Qur'an and Shifa from Qur'an وَنُنَزِلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَا وَرَحْمَةً لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ That Qur'an is a means of Shifa. So let us utilize this خَيْرُ الدَّوَاءَ Quran. The best cure, the best remedy is Qur'an. وَذَكِرَنُ الدَّاءَ لِلْقُلُوبِ وَالْأَبْدَانِ Ulama explain that is a cure for the sickness of the heart, spiritual ailments, well abdan, and physical ailments as well. Wa shifa unli ma fi sudur. It is a shifa. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam once came to Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha, wa imra'a tu ali juha, and somebody was treating her. So Nabi alayhi salam said, Ali jiha bi kitabillah. Treat her with the kitab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we find that there's a lot of power in the Qur'an. Let us utilize this Qur'an as a means for shifa and cure. So firstly, a person should be reciting a, a, a lot of surah of the Qur'an. If we start from the beginning, Surah Al-Fatiha, which is Surah Al-Shifa, it's called Surah Al-Shafiya, Surah Al-Kafiya, so this is a surah for shifa. We see that uh, Sahaba radiallahu anhum once were traveling. They came to an area and the people never gave them a place to stay. The leader of the tribe got ill. And then they came back to Sahaba and they made an agreement. One Sahabi went and he said he read Surah Al-Fatiha seven times. So the people of the tribe were very stressed because they tried all remedies but they could not find a remedy for 
the leader. And the Sabi just read Surah al Surah al Fatiha, and he was given Shifa. So that is the power of Quran. Once Jibril Salatu Salam was by Nabi Ali Salam, they heard a sound and he said, Hada Babu min sama futiha al yawm. A door in the heavens has opened today, it has never opened before. فَنَزَلَ مِنْهُ مَلَكٌ An angel descended هَذَا مَلَكٌ نَزَلَ لَأَرْضِ لَمْ يَنْزِلْ قَطُّ This angel has never ever descended on earth before. It's the first time he is descending. فَسَلَّمَ I made salam and he said أَبْشِرْ بِنُورَيْنِ Glad tidings to the two nurs that you have been given. No Nabi before you has been given it. It is Fatiha and the end of Surah Baqarah the Ayat. So very special A'adham Surah Fil Qur'an, the greatest Surah in the Qur'an, Surah Al-Fatiha, بأفضل القرآن والذي نفسي بيده ما أنزل في التوراة ولا في الإنجيل ولا في الزبور ولا في الفرقان مثلها In the previous books, nothing has been revealed like it وإنها سبع من المثاني والقرآن العظيم الذي أعطيته and that is the Surah Fatiha which I've been given. So ulama say that we should try to read Surah Fatiha um, and there's different ways to do it. We won't get into detail. But uh, Ibn Jawzi says that I قَدْ جَرَّبْتُ أَنَا مِنْ ذَلِكَ فِي نَفْسِي وَفِي غَيْرِ أُمُورًا عَجِيبًا I've tried and tested it especially when I was in Makkah Mukarramah and uh, I had a very serious sickness and it became very severe and I decided I, I didn't use any form of medication or go to doctors I took water Zamzam -zam, and I started reading Surah Al-Fatiha and I drank the water and I Sprinkle some water on that place. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me shifa. Charabtu dhalika miraran adidatan. I tried and tested it many times and it worked. So this was in his experience. فَإِنْ قَرَعْتَ الْفَاتِحَ وَرَقَدِرْ بِهَا عَلَى نَفْسِكَ وَقَرَعْتَ عَلَى مَائِنْ وَشَرِبْتَهُ إِنْ تَفْعَدْ بِذَلِكَ جِدًّا Likewise, if a person doesn't have zamzam, they should read Surah Fatiha seven times below blow on the water and uh, if they want to aid he said ayatul kursi and the mu'awwadatain then you can do that also he used to say for the quran wa shifa'u min jameel adwa al qalbiya wal badaniya that it is a cure for all sicknesses of the heart and the body and sicknesses of dunya and akhirah so let us try to make it a habit to read surah al fatiha then Mu'awwadatain Kul A'udh bi Rabbi Al-Falaq and Kul A'udh bi Rabbi Al-Nas Aisha radiyallahu anha used to say that Nabi Ali Islam when he had in the difficulties Nafatha ala nafsi bil Mu'awwadat He used to blow and read the Mu'awwadat Wa masha'a anhu bi yadihi He used to blow on his hands and rub it on his body Before Nabi Ali Islam passed away as well he used to blow the Mu'awwadatat and uh, the Mu'awwadatain blow and rub it on his body. Kuntu aqra'u alayhi wa amsahu bi yadihi raja'an bi barkatiha. Wa fi riwayati muslimin kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha maridha ahad min ahlihi nafatha alayhi bil Mu'awwadat. If any of the family of Nabi alayhi salam got injured or sick then he used to take his hand, blow on it with the Mu'awwadatain and rub it on them. Once Nabi Ali Salaam was reading Salat and a scorpion bit him, ثُمَّ جَعَى بِنَائٍ فِي مَاءٌ وَمِحْلَهٌ He asked for a container with water and salt فَجَعَلَ يَضَعُ مَوْضِعَ الْلَدْغَ فِي الْمَاءِ وَالْمِلْحِ And on that place he put the water with the salt and he used to read قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدْ وَالْمُعَوَّذَتَيْنِ and the Mu'awwadatain so that's also Mujarrab Amal then the last two surahs of Surah Baqarah 
من قرأ بالآيتين من آخر سورة البقرة كفتاه it will suffice for him. Ulama say what's the meaning? There's a lot of meanings. Kafatahu min kulli su'i min al-afat from all difficulties, sicknesses, calamities. Kafatahu min shadhi shaytan from shaytan. Daf'ata anhu shar al-ins wal-jinn from the planning and plotting of insani and jinnat. Kafatahu ma hasal lahu bi sabihim ma min al-thawabi an talib shayin akhir. From all needs that he has, it will suffice for him. Then Surah Yasin Inna li kulli shayin qalban wa inna qalba al-Qur'ani Yasin The art of the Qur'an is Yasin Man qara Yasin fi sadri nahar qudhiya al-hajatuhu His needs will be fulfilled So let us be in a habit of reading Surah Yasin Tashfa'u li qariha It will be intercession Wa yufaru li mustami'a Whoever listened to it will be forgiven Allah wa yasun tu al-afi al-tawra' And it's been given names, but it will grant you bi khayri dunya wal akhira, the best of dunya and akhira. It's called dafia and qadia. Tadfaw an sahiba kulli su. It will remove all harms and evils and difficulties from a believer. Wa taqdi lahu kulla haja. And it will fulfill all his needs. So it is said that at least Daily morning and evening, if a person specifically needs it for you one times to read it, it will fulfill the need, whatever your intention is, it will fulfill the needs. If there is fear, it will remove the fear. If there is sickness, it will cure a person. If a person is hungry, it will remove his hungerness. Then there are the six ayat, which are the so ayat of Shifa. So morning and evening, we should read it. If it can be written, with saffron and drink, or read it and blow on the person, or read it and blow on water, then it can be done. Ya ayyuhal nas qad jaa'atkum mu'idhatum min rabbikum wa shifa' lima fi sudur. First ayat. Wa jish fi sudur qawmin mu'minin. Second ayat. Ya khuruju min bufuniha sharabun mukhtalifun alwanu fihi shifa'un lil nas. Fourth ayat, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءُ وَرَحْمَ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Fifth, وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ And sixth, قُلْ هُوَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا هُدَوْ وَشِفَاءُ So if we read this here also, it's a mujarab amal to show that many people have benefited from that. Likewise, there are many other mujarab amals which have been mentioned also, which we won't get into, but the point is that let us use Qur'an. In Rabbit al in 2014, they did a study and the effects of reading the Quran on a patient who had a coma. And uh, when they checked the GSC and the diagnosis and they observed the psychological parameters and the blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, etc. And uh, after 30 minutes, they played the Quran audio therapy. They found that the blood pressure and other inconsistent deficiencies, he became stabilized. So just listening to Quran while a person is ill also will be beneficial. In 2015, Baitul Muqtadin did a test of the Quran as well for patients that have mental disorders. So Surah Fatiha, Yaseen, Ayat Al-Kursi, Surah Kaaf, Surah Al-Baqarah. And in the psychiatric patients which they did the studies, they found that uh, there was positive effect on the patients. Likewise, Al Manaro Center did some studies for reciting the Quran on patients for them to listen to it. Chronic disorders like paralysis, Parkinson's, uh, to increase CD4 in HIV AIDS patients. And they found that the study is an alternative treatment for all these sicknesses as well. So, Quran is the kalam of Allah. It is primarily for shifa of the spiritual maladies, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a fringe benefit of physical maladies. Whoever listens to Adhan and says the dua, Allah ma rabba hadhi da'wati tama wa salati al-qa'ima, aati muhammadan il-wasila wal-fadila wa ba'athu maqama mahmudan ladhi wa'atta, innaka la tukhlifu al-mi'ad, then حلت له شفاعة يوم القيامة that وجبت له شفاعة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم the intercession of Nabi عليه الصلاة والسلام will become incumbent necessary 
on the day of Qiyamah. May Allah give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.